Hello and welcome to the Mobile Skate Park Series, your one and only stop for the best of skateboarding, BMX, and inline skating. I'm your host, Keith Allen, and today we bring you coverage of the first stop for the Mobile Skate Park Series competition that went down in Cincinnati, Ohio. Not only has the MSS drawn the top name pros in Burt Rowling, but believe it or not, the biggest names in street skating also trekked to Cincinnati to battle it out on a one-of-a-kind MSS street course. And we're bringing it all to you today on the Mobile Skate Park Series. Over the past few years, inline skating has been treated like that little stepbrother, the one that gets beat on and teased and treated with no respect. But inline skating deserves respect just like a brother does when he starts to grow up and his siblings have to step back and recognize. The equipment behind me, it's an example of what inline skaters can hit. You would never see this stuff at a skate park. You'd never see skateboarders going anywhere near it. You'd never see BMX riders even saying it's rideable. But the guys today in Cincinnati at the Mobile Skate Park Series, they're gonna kill it. And that same passion and trying to earn respect lives for inline skaters on the vert ramp just the same. We're like the little brothers of BMXing and skateboarding, you know, and like we have we had a lot of dues to pay, you know, and everybody that was rollerblading back in the day was having a great time. I think rollerblading is probably not as popular as the other sports because um, a lot of the other ones are more mainstream. You see them on TV more, and a lot of little kids who see that on TV kind of jump on the bandwagon before they before they really see all the other sports. And I don't know. I think rollerblading has as much talent and as much difficulty as anything else out there, but I think in time it'll get the respect it deserves. Crack your neck, check these primitive melodies. Like we take the same falls, we work just as hard as the other sports. Why we're not getting the respect that we need, you know? As long as I'm here, I'm gonna defend my sport all the way, you know? Because it's no, we shouldn't be treated just the same as the other ones. I think what's gonna take people to be more respectful of rollerblading is just more education about it. like. I think when some people think of rollerblading, they think of, you know, people recreationally skating. And the more they see it and the longer we're around, I think the more respect we'll get. I'm Mark Shays with Arlo Eisenberg, and we're going to take you through a quick journey here. The best inline skaters going head to head here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Including one of the favorites on street, Chris Haffey. Chris Haffey. It's guaranteed. Yeah, anything huge, like, it's all Chris. Probably one of the best role players in the world. I mean, it's just natural talent to him. Anything he wants to put his mind to doing, it's ended up getting done. He's focused. He's focused on winning. Most of his earnings are on competitions. So usually when he shows up, he's bound to win. Haffy wrapped up a great season last year with a dominant performance, winning the LG Action Sports Championships. We haven't seen domination like that on the tour since 2003 when Brian Aragon wrapped up the title. I don't know what to say about that guy. He went to sleep like 8 o'clock last night just to skate this competition. Watching Brian Aragon skate is always just ridiculous, so I don't know, I, I really like watching him skate. They call him Prince Aragon for a reason. I think he pretty much dominates these tour stops and stuff like that. Shima, Shima's like a legend. He's like a god, man. That's just Shima. That's no matter what, you can't change Shima. Wow, I think he's a horrible person. He can't do interviews. Well, it's hard to believe there's anything that Shima can't do after witnessing all the success he's had. With all the accolades that have been bestowed upon Brian Aragon, Chris Happy, and the like, it's important to remember that no one has been more influential than Shima, influencing street riders like Dre Powell. Dre is one of the funniest people I've ever met. First of all, he's the loudest person I've ever met, and he talks the most. He loves everybody, and he raps, he does all his things. It's just pretty cool. This course is gnarly. <laughs> I might be falling a lot. <laughs> well, he'll get that chance right now. We started with 16 skaters, four heats of four. The top two from each of those heats advanced to the semifinals. So now we are down to eight skaters. These eight will battle it out with the top two advancing from each semifinal, and then we are down to our final four. Dre Powell getting things kicked off in semi number one. Well, he won starting off with a bang. Dre Powell trying to transfer sweat stand style. It looks like he wants to go out of the course. And he'll have plenty of time to do that. Each round, 
bang, bang, one guy after the next, only five minutes long. He's just got to advance, and then he gets another shot at it. Chris Happy having some trouble, though. Right, they get as many attempts as they can fit into the five minutes. You see these guys taking a bunch of different approaches. You see some creativity, some difficulty. Shima trying to get very creative here. Now dancing around on the coping. Holy moly. I've been practicing. I'm ready. Last year's tour champion, Richie Velasquez, needs to make sure he's been practicing because these guys are going off. You can see all the different tricks these guys are throwing. It's so cool, the format. They get to try a lot of different tricks. Jerry Butler with a big surprise there. First person out of the course. Yep, he made it out. That might light a fire under Trey Powell. Ron Copeland getting technical as well. One of the Ohio locals representing from the hometown crowd transferring up on the handrail. And traveling across the big pond, Ali Short, Great Britain. Fast slide, the backside, backslide, cool transfer. Just trying a whole bunch of different variations. Once they've nailed the trick, a lot of them are taking a different line. Well, this is the, one of the favorites on a lot of people's scorecards. Brian Aragon, the Prince, transferring. Ain't been my turn yet. But when it is, I'm gonna lay it down. It's a great best trick course. It's got a little something for everyone. Pure street skaters like Rashard Johnson can battle the handrail. So a surprise, Chris Haffey did not make it, but Dre Powell, Brian Shima, Brian Aragon, and Rashard Johnson will battle it out for the final. When we get back, the street king is crowned, and we learn a thing or two from big man Richie Velasquez. You don't want to miss this. The Mobile Skate Park Series is brought to you by Toyota. See your local Scion dealer starting at 13245 Scion. What moves you? By Paul Mitchell, professional salon products. Paul Mitchell, the style in lifestyle sports. By Mongoose Bicycles. Check out the Mongoose Simon Tebron and Stephen McCann signature bikes from the number one name in BMX. Mongoose, number one from day one. And by ASA Events, the leader in action sports event and television production since 1994. We are action sports. Welcome back to Sawyer Point in beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio. It's the Mobile Skate Park Series. Last year's number one in the world, Richie Velasquez, is going to teach us a trick. It's this week's Trictionary, presented by Inline Warehouse. Hey, my name is Richie Velasquez, back again on Trictionary to show you guys how to do a top sole. Check it out. Get away. All right, you might have remembered last year we started on the basic grind, the sole grind, which is one foot locked on your sole space, the other one locked on between the middle wheels. This time, we're gonna up it up one step, and we're gonna put one foot on top, facing this way, and the other foot on top, just like this. When you're starting to do a top sole, it's good that you practice stalling it on something like this because then you can get the feeling of jumping, locking, and coming right off. Once you got the top size sole stall locked down, you'll be ready to start with a little momentum. My name is Richie Velasquez. I wish you guys good luck with the top sole. Later. Before we get back to more of the best trick competition, let's hit the streets with a few pro rollers to check out what Cincy has to offer for skating and party. Hey, I'm Ollie Short, this is Egg Bailey, this is Dre Powell. We're all just hanging outside the hotel waiting for our limousine to go out. Red Cheetah, I think this is it. Man or the devil, so grab your pick and shovel and let's struggle for the next level. If you ain't moving, you will stagnate. And if you wait for shit to happen, you gon' keep on waiting. Come on, embrace the struggle, light ball hustle. Using your mind, mouth, or your muscle, embrace the struggle. And yet another big night out in beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio. But now it's time for work. The final four: Dre Powell, Brian Shima, Rashard Johnson, and Brian Aragon. Well, all these guys have been through a couple of rounds through the prelims and the semifinals. 
and they have to use some strategy to get here, but all that strategy now is out the window. It's just about best tricks, and Brian Aragon coming in that spirit. This is a 540 to Alip Soul. This is a major trick right here. Big difficulty, big danger. That's about 12 feet down to the landing ramp. Now, Rashard Johnson made it into the finals with some difficult technical moves there on that handrail with the big draw. And he's going to stick with what got him here. Here he's going true spin. Looks like he's trying to get a top acid, ending up kind of in a strange fish break. Now, Brian Shima knows how to work a best trick contest. He's been gunning for this major trick here in the contest, but it's going to take some attempt from him to sort that thing out. Now, Dre's done enough throughout the preliminary rounds to make it into the finals, but there's one trick that he's been working on all throughout that he hasn't quite stuck perfectly. You can see he's still going for it here. It looks like he wants to get out of the course. Now, Brian Aragon's got a great trick under his belt here in the finals. Oh. And he's still going, so he's not content with that one great trick. He's going to keep trying to pad his lead here. Richard working this handrail. No, give the people what they came to see. <laughs> Now this handrail up on top of the box has been mostly avoided throughout this contest. Now Shima is taking it on. If he hits this trick, it'll really put the pressure back on Brian Aragon. You can see an evolution. First he went up there and he just kind of hit it. Now he's la actually riding it and checking out his landing. So if he can put this all together, it's going to be dynamite. It's huge. Now I'll talk about putting a trick together. Dre Powell still working on this trick. It looks like he wants to go out of the course. He's going up sweat stance, up the handrail. Then he transfers to the other handrail sweat stance. Now you can see him looking out of the course. He wants to jump over that railing. Takes a lot of balance and control, and there you go. Brian Aragon just adding one more trick. But remember, it's a one-trick contest. So he can do 10 good tricks, but he's got to make sure he's got the best trick. Right, that hurricane was great, but still you got to think that that 540 alley soul is going to be his best trick. Rashar going up the handrail. Those are good tricks for Rashar, but not enough to compete with these big tricks that Aragon and Shima are attempting. Here goes Shima up on the handrail. Back oh. in, and that's it. A great trick from Shima. This is going to make it very difficult for the judges. Brian Shima, this is blind, trying to find that handrail all the way up there. That's about 14 feet up, and he's got to jump back in. That's a lot of momentum coming back down on that landing, and he holds it. Great trick from Shima. And the judges agree as well. The final Paul Mitchell leaderboard, Brian Shima takes home top honors. A valiant effort by Brian Aragon, but he could not take home the gold. Now we're gonna shift gears over to the vert ramp and the gladiators of the air. It was here two years ago where Atho unveiled his double backflip and opened up the floodgates. What will we see today? Double duty out here, lead singer of Pico Train, performing for the folks here in Cincinnati, as well as jumping behind the microphone and in front of the cameras. But now we shift gears to the vert ramp. A lot of young talent and veterans can be battling it out here on this monster vert ramp. Guys like Patrick Zimmerman from Germany and Kevin Marin Lopez from Belgium. Kevin only 15 years old, and of course Fabiola da Silva, now a veteran, and Mark Engelhardt, the last skater to beat both Yasu Toko brothers so was all the way back in 2002. Since then he's been working hard training he's added some tricks like the double flat spin. I'm the third brother they don't know it yet. Trying to make himself more competitive against the dominant Yasu Toko. You, you can look at it one of two ways one way is uh, they can push you and make you want to skate better and the other way is you can look at them and say wow I really suck. But you got to try to look at it the first way, and uh, everything will work out better, and you'll end up skating better. It's just cool to see two brothers from Japan. Like they could probably skate 
street and destroy everybody if they really wanted to, you know what I mean? When I watch them, it's almost like watching a completely different sport. Being on rollerblades to me is like a second nature, like I, I just put on skates and it's like walking or whatever, but when I see what they do, like I know in my lifetime, even if I tried, I wouldn't be able to do what they do, like and that, that blows my mind. Quite an incredible compliment coming from one of the most accomplished street skaters in the world. Now we shift gears over to the vert ramp exclusively. The territory of veterans like Fabiola da Silva, who in run number one, things didn't go quite the way she had planned, but she still comes packing the biggest tricks. Yeah, no doubt about it. Fabiola's got the plasma and the fakie 900, and word on the street is she's been working on a double backflip. A new addition to the tour, 15-year-old Kevin Marin Lopez out of Belgium. He's got some fans here in Cincinnati. Yeah, and another European skater here, Patrick Zimmerman. We've seen a lot of young riders coming out of Europe, but not so many coming from the U.S. As we take a look at Rich Parker, also a European. In fact, the last great rider we've seen rising up through the ranks from America is Thumper Nagasaka. Thumper, I, I haven't seen him ride in a little while, so I'm, I'm excited to see what he's been doing. I heard he's got some new tricks, and uh, he's always learning stuff. Every time I see him ride, he learns a new trick, so he's going to be riding good. It's a double-edged sword living in Maui. He has to train by himself, but when he does show up with new tricks, it impresses the judges that much more. Well, since last year, I learned flat nines. That's the new trick for this contest. So Thumper doing his part to keep American bird skating on the map. And now all he needs to do is add some amplitude, and he'll be ready to soar high and compete with the likes of the tour's highest flying rider, Takeshi Yasutoko, out of Japan. Well, Takeshi skating has become sort of an all or nothing proposition. He's going so big now. Why? Because he went down early in his run. And that's about the only thing that would put him out of contention. And you see that score, 55-25. So incredibly uncharacteristic for him. And why? Because he went down early in his run. Mark Engelhart is our top ranked American and he really has added amplitude to his runs in the last couple of seasons. And it's become something very impressive to witness. He's got the big trick capabilities, and he's flying high now. Very solid competitor. A great first run for Mark Engelhart, but only nailing an 81-5-0. Right now, that puts him in first place, but that kind of a score against the Yasutokos does not get it done. So we'll have to see how he can do in run number two. Well, talking about the Yasutokos, here he is. He's been so dominant here. It was right here in Cincinnati where he unveiled the double backflip. And here he goes, double back 180. And a double flat spin and a double backflip. This is why he is so incredibly dominant. So many tricks, so powerful, and he knows he killed it. A great run. And his younger brother left the window wide open, and Eito just blasted right through it. Look at these moves from Eito. He's got so many signature moves, like this 1080 California roll at the height of his highest air. And he's just got so many tricks. It's what makes him so difficult to compete against. The double backflip, and that's like almost a throwaway move now for Eito. 91. He has got to be happy with that. That puts him way out on top, almost 10 full points ahead of number two, taking a look after the end of run number one in the Paul Mitchell leaderboard, Mark Engelhart sits in second, but remember, it's only the better of those two runs that count. So this thing's still wide open. The MSS is brought to you by Toyota. See your local Scion dealer starting at 13245 Scion, what moves you? By Paul Mitchell, professional salon products. Paul Mitchell, the style in lifestyle sports. By Mongoose Bicycles, check out the Mongoose Simon Tabron and Stephen McCann signature bikes from the number one name in BMX, Mongoose, number one from day one. And by ASA Events, the leader in action sports event and television production since 1994, we are Action Sports. And we are back in Cincinnati, Ohio, a city that has incredible sports and entertainment, world-class museums, amusement parks, and restaurants. A city that's been a leader in bringing unique events to its amazing venues, and now, for the fourth year, is playing host to the biggest names in action sports right here on the shores of the Ohio River. So we are back on the vert ramp for the second round of the vert finals. Eito Yasutoko in familiar territory, way out ahead of the field, but his younger brother Takeshi in unfamiliar territory down at the bottom of the pack. And Fabiola da Silva, also in unfamiliar territory, a 59 and change is not where she usually finds herself out of 100 points. 
putting it together here a little bit better. You see Fabiola landed her big tricks, but a fall kept her out of contention. Next up, Mark Engelhart. Second run, once again, I wanted to go for the double flat. I've been having some trouble with my skates today. I just got brand new skates and brand new wheels. Something was wrong with them earlier, and I just thought I had fixed it. A massive trick from Mark Engelhart landing the double flat spin, but again, another rider falls to inconsistency. Eito Yasutoko, 91 even in run number one, trying to better that because he knows it's never a walk in the park with his younger brother looking over his shoulder. But going down on the double backflip, not something you see very often. Up to throw away his run number two score and stick with the 91. That is still the benchmark. Well, he knows that 91 is a good score, but he also knows that it's a beatable score when Takeshi's on the ramp. Takeshi's got to have a perfect run here to overtake his brother, but so far off to a perfect start, getting upside down. He landed that double flat spin, which, which was a trick that he needs. And now if he can be consistent on the coping and come through with some big tricks like that transfer, this is exactly the kind of run Takeshi needed to have, and he filled up the entire 50 seconds. We could have a new champion after this run. Look at how Takeshi did it. This is a trick that he lives or dies by. It's a double flat spin so high, no one goes as high as Takeshi, and certainly not on a double flat spin. And then these lip tricks are really the key to his success. The only thing that his brother can't do is those difficult grinds like Takeshi. There it is, 94-5-0. We have a new champion, Takeshi Yasutoko. Best his big brother in the Paul Mitchell final leaderboard by almost three full points. The tradition continues. Yasutoko, Yasutoko in the top two spots, dominating this sport. Mark Engelhart does take home the bronze medal, however, and a great finish for him. Special thank you to the Greater Cincinnati Sports Corporation, WEBN, KISS FM, WLWT Channel 5, the Greater Cincinnati Convention and Visitors Bureau, and the Cincinnati Recreation Commission. Also special thanks to the Downtowner and Ollie Skate Park. If you like the music you heard in this show, be sure to go to mssevent.com to check out all your favorite bands. For Arlo Eisenberg, I'm Mark Shays. See you next time.